I hope... I hope you're getting a sense of the order in which I've done things. You remember, we looked at basic identities, basic equations, then I showed you the T results, okay? And then I showed you T results with the identities and identities without, right? So you can compare. I'm going to do the same thing today. Now we're going to, bless you, we're going to start with very simple examples. And today I'm going to um, hopefully bring out what that problem with the T results was, okay? So we're going to um, do questions both ways, like with T results and then solving it the way that you normally would without. I'm going to choose simple examples, ones that you can equally do both ways, so that you don't get bogged down in how difficult the question is. You can see the concept at work. Okay. So let's start with a super super easy one. Okay. Solve cos x equals zero, and we'll go from what's two pi. Yeah. Okay. So, cos x equals zero. Now, I, I reckon, hopefully, fingers crossed, because it's such a simple question, you might even be able to just write down the answer. There are two solutions, and maybe you know the shape of the cosine curve well enough to be like, oh, solution there, solution there. We are going to do that in a second. Just file it away in the back of your head. Let's deal with this by t results first. Let's see how it works, okay? So if you want to look at a question, it's got no t's in it or anything, you have to introduce the t's, okay? So the first thing you say is, let t equals, t equal, tan of x on 2, okay? Now, do you remember that identity I showed you before? It didn't actually make sense to make it tan x on 2. Sometimes it's tan x, sometimes it may be tan 2x or 3x. It just depends on what kind of question you've got, okay? But this is kind of the default way that you start. If that's t, then you can go straight to saying, well, therefore, cos x ought to be equal to, and then you're trying to remember the t result, okay? If you struggle a little bit, draw your triangles, okay? But hopefully most of you know by now, it's 1 minus on 1 plus, okay? So that's just the standard t result. All right, now, therefore, and this one's really simple. I don't need to bring in any other ones, any other setup. So I just take that and I say, well, that's equal to 0, right? Now you can see in this case I can disregard the denominator, okay? Um, because there's no value that the denominator can take that makes the whole thing zero. So another way of thinking about that is I can just multiply through by one plus t squared and I'll get this, okay? Now that has two solutions, plus or minus one. So that means tan of x on two has two solutions, plus or minus one, okay? I probably should have noted by the way, I was a bit sloppy with this, because I've noted this domain at the beginning, the second you turn into t's, right, you don't have x's anymore, you've got x on 2. So that's going to adjust your domain a little bit. If this is in x's, and I want to talk in terms of x on 2's, I'm going to take that, and I'm going to divide by 2. So seeing as I've divided that part of the inequality by 2, I divide every other part, right? So my new domain for these t results will be between 0 and pi. Okay? All right, now, come down to here. Let's branch this off a little bit. Um, tan of x on two, we'll start with the easy one first. Let that equal to one, okay? Now what value of tan, sorry, what value of x on two, if you take the tan of that gives you one. That's an exact value, do you remember? In radians? Tan of what gives you one? Pi on four, right? So that means that x on two is pi on four. Okay, now you look at that, you check, is it in the domain? No problems, okay? Are there any other solutions to this in the domain? No, so you move on, okay? Now, uh, I actually want x, so I multiply through by two, ta-da, there's one solution, okay? Now I'll do the other one, tan of x on two is equal to minus one. You might be a little less familiar with that, so maybe think back to either your graph or your quadrants. Right? So maybe in this case, because I'm a bit of a fan of graphs, I'll do quadrants just for the sake of it. A, S, T, C. Okay? So pi and 4 is my base angle. Right? When I come around to here, no, sorry, yeah, tan is negative, right? So which quadrant am I after? I'm actually after this one. Okay? So x on 2 is going to be 3 pi on 4. You can verify that. Chuck it in your calculator. It'll, it'll work. Okay? 3 pi and 4 is in this quadrant. That's why it's negative. Multiply by 2, and there are your two answers. Pi on 2, 3 pi on 2. Now, 
let's just confirm that. You don't have to do this, obviously, when you're doing this properly as a question, but just for us, since we're introducing this as an idea, let's go back to cos x equals zero. How would you solve this without t results? Pretty simple. I would graph it. Cos x in this domain looks like so. Okay, and there's your midpoint of pi. It ends at two pi, okay? So cos is, is equal to zero. I'm looking for these um, intercepts here, right? And just by the symmetry of it, you can see that's pi on two, right? And in the same way, three pi on two. 